Hi, Bookish Besties. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Breeds. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. And if you are already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are here to talk about all of the new releases coming out in August. <music> So it is once again time to talk about all of the new releases coming out in August that were not already previously featured in my August Book of the Month prediction video. So if you are interested in even more new releases, please be sure to go ahead and check out that Book of the Month prediction video because there are a lot of other new releases featured there. However, before we get into the new and shiny books for August, I want to introduce you to something else new and shiny that you might want to add to your household, and that is Ana Luisa Jewelry, who is so kindly sponsoring today's video. I am sure you are all very familiar with Ana Luisa, but just in case you or not, Ana Luisa is an increasingly popular New York based jewelry brand whose mission is to create high quality jewelry at affordable prices, all while ensuring they are doing no further damage to the planet. From the materials they use to make their products to the packaging in which they ship those products, Ana Luisa is committed to sustainability. They are also carbon neutral. Ana Luisa has a wide variety of options that can suit just about every taste from the bold to the delicate to the colorful to the simple, and you are sure to be able to find something that you love or to find something for someone you love. Their pieces are unique. Their quality is unmatched. Their pieces are rigorously tested for strength and humidity. They are also tarnish resistant and they will be sure to last for years to come. I am currently wearing Lucy, their star bracelet, as well as May, their moon pendant. As you can kind of see, there is like a celestial theme going on here with the choices that I made. As you can kind of see, Lucy is this very delicate gold chain with three different clusters of stars going around. May is also a very delicate necklace. It's got a gold golden moon surrounding a beautiful mother of pearl inlay and there are cubic zirconias going on in the moon itself. And I am absolutely obsessed with these pieces, y'all. I could not be more pleased. I've always just wanted a few simple pieces that I knew were going to go with everything, but more importantly, I knew that we're going to withstand the test of time and we're going to be able to endure anything that I put them through. I am not a person that is going to take off and on jewelry at the end or the beginning of every day. I'm going to shower with those pieces. I'm going to sleep with those pieces. And so I need to make sure that the pieces are going to be able to handle all all of that. And because I know that Ana Luisa jewelry is high quality, it is rigorously tested, it is tarnish and water resistant, I know that it is going to be able to withstand whatever I put it through and it's going to be very long lasting so it's not going to need to be replaced. And that actually leads me into the main reason why I wanted to partner with Ana Luisa and that is because I support their mission and commitment to sustainability and I wanted an opportunity to partner with a brand that aligns with my personal values. I have talked a lot already on my channel about the personal changes that I have made in an effort to live a little bit more sustainably and that that has definitely primarily extended into my consumer habits, especially, you know, when it regards to book buying. And no matter what I'm purchasing, I try to make mindful and educated choices. And because of that, I wanted to be able to help others to be able to make an informed and sustainable decision when they were going after their next jewelry purchase. By making a concerted effort from the manufacturing to the shipping process and ensuring their products are long lasting, so you're not going to have to worry about the end of life of that product or replacing that product, Anna Luisa is doing what they can to do their part for the planet. And because of that, Anna Luisa is a wonderful choice to consider the next time you are in the market for timeless, elegant jewelry for yourself or a loved one. If you head into my description box, you will see a custom link that will take you directly to Ana Luisa's website. I hope you take a second to visit the link and see all that they have to offer. And thank you so much once again to Ana Luisa for sponsoring this video. All right, everybody. So now let's go ahead and talk about the new releases for August. There are quite a lot of them. There are over 20 books that I'm going to talk about in this video. So I'm going to try to run through them as quickly as possible so that we are not here all day. We are going to, of course, start with the first Tuesday in August and that is August 6th and we have the newest release from Will Dean called The Chamber. Now I'm a little bit nervous about this one because I've absolutely loved two of Will Dean's and then I absolutely hated the one that I read by him the last which was called The Last One. I was severely disappointed by that one but because I've really enjoyed two of his other works I'm willing to give this one a chance and if this one doesn't work for me I'm done I'm out I'm not going to be reading any more from Will Dean in the future. Now I know that some people were thinking that this one would be a book of the month prediction. I did not include this in that video because the last one was actually Actually not included with book of the month. So part of me has a feeling that they're not going to be featuring him anymore. I could be wrong. I would love to be wrong. I would absolutely pick this one up in a book of the month edition if it was released on book of the month, but I don't think so. This says six experienced saturation divers are locked inside a hyperbaric chamber. Calm and professional, they know that rapid decompression would be fatal. And so they work in shifts, breathing helium and survive.
surviving in hot, close quarters. Then one of them is found dead in the bunk. With four days of decompression to go before the lock attached to the chamber can be safely opened, the group must watch one another's backs at all times. And then another diver is discovered unresponsive. Everyone is on edge. What or who is taking them out one by one? And will any of them still be alive by the time the four days is up? Or will paranoia, exhaustion, suspicion, and pressure destroy them all? I'm really interested in this. This is definitely a locked room mystery. It does say this is kind of and then there were none meets the last breath. And I'm absolutely here for it. I definitely want to see what Will Dean is going to be able to do with this locked room mystery. I want to give him one more chance before I give up on him. And so I am anxiously awaiting this one in August. And then on August 6th, we have one of my most highly anticipated releases, and that is Apprentice to the Villain by Hannah Nicole Mayer. You all know how I felt about Assistant to the Villain. It is one of the best books that I've read so far this year. I am highly anticipating this one. I've already pre-ordered the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition that is coming out, and I'm going to be getting to this one as soon as possible. I don't really want to say too much about this one just because it is a sequel, but I would essentially classify Apprentice to the Villain as a cozy fantasy romance, and it was just absolutely delightful. I loved all of the characters in that story. It evoked all of the positive emotions in me, and I cannot wait for this one. We also have a new release from T. Kingfisher coming out on August 6th called A Sorceress Comes to Call. Now, T. Kingfisher is another author that I'm not familiar with at all, but she seems to be growing in popularity. I seem to see her all around the online bookish community. From what I understand, a lot of her work is kind of like darker horror retellings, and this one's no different. It says that this is a dark retelling of the Brothers Grimm's Goose Girl, rife with secrets, murder, and forbidden magic. So if you have enjoyed T. Kingfisher in the past, if you enjoy her stories, if this one sounds intriguing to you, this is one that I would definitely keep your eye out for coming out on August 6th. Next, we actually have a romance debut called The Truth According to Ember by Danica Nava. It says, Emberly Cardinal has not always been a liar. Well, not for anything that counted at least, but her job search is not going well. And when her resume is rejected for the 37th time, she takes matters into her own hands. She gets creative, listing her qualifications and answers the ethnicity question on applications with a lie, a half lie, technically. No one wanted Native American Ember, but White Ember has just landed her dream accounting job on Park Avenue, Oklahoma City, that is. Accountant Ember thrives in corporate life and her love life seems to be looking up too. Danny Wawa Colson, the IT guy and fellow native, caught her eye on the first day, seems to actually be interested in her. Despite her unease over the no dating policy at work, they start to see each other secretly, which somehow makes it even hotter. But then they're caught in a compromising position on a work trip. A scheming colleague blackmails Ember, threatening to expose their relationship. As the manipulation continues to grow, so do Ember's lies. She must make the hard decision to either stay silent or finally tell the truth, which could cost her everything. So that sounds like it's going to be a little bit messy, to be honest. You have two people who are in a secret workplace relationship. One is being blackmailed and the lies just keep spiraling. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about that. Y'all know how I feel about rom-coms in general, but I did want to bring this to your attention because we have an Indigenous author, we have Indigenous characters here, and I think that this would actually be great if it were featured on Book of the Month. I did not obviously include it in my Book of the Month predictions, but I do think that this would be a solid one to see on them as well. So whether it comes out in Book of the Month or whether it's just something to have your eye on, I would definitely keep this one on your radar. And then this last one for August 6th, I'm really not going to talk too terribly much about because it's the newest release from Sarah Buchanan called House of Glass. This is actually one that came out very early for Book of the Month. Book of the Month had it as a July selection. So it's something that I definitely talked about in my Pick or Pass video for the month of July. I'll just read the first sentences here. It says, a young nanny who plunged to her death or was she pushed? A nine-year-old girl who collects sharp objects and refuses to speak. A lawyer whose job it is to uncover who in the family is a victim and who is a murderer. But how can you find out the truth when everyone is lying? So again, you have secrets, lies, complicated family dynamics. I am here for it. I've really enjoyed Sarah Buchanan in the past, both on her own and in her duo collaborations with Greer Hendricks. This is definitely an anticipated release for me for the end of the year, and I will certainly be getting to it as soon as possible. All right, and then moving on into August 13th, this definitely seems to be where the majority of the releases come out. We have a new mystery thriller from Laura Elizabeth Flynn called Till Death Do Us Part. It says, the author of The Girls Are Also Nice Here returns with a thriller set in the vineyards of Napa Valley that asks, what happens when the husband you thought died years ago shows up alive? I read the synopsis of this and I'm actually very much intrigued by it. I have never read The Girls Are Also Nice Here, but I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions on that book or this author because this one hasn't been added to my TBR just yet, but I am very much intrigued. So please leave me your thoughts and comments down below. This is definitely one that is on my radar and I wanted you to have it on your radar as well. Next, I have another genre blend that's going to once again seem to blend horror and fantasy, maybe a little thriller as well. It's a book called Through the Midnight Door by Katarina Monroe. It says the Finch sisters once spent long hot summers exploring the dozens of abandoned properties littering their dying town until they found an impossible home with an endless hall of doors and three keys left waiting for them. Fearless, they stepped inside their chosen rooms and experienced horrors they never dared speak of again. Now, years later, youngest sister Claire has been discovered dead in that old, desiccated house, haunted by their sister's suicide and the memories of a past they've struggled 
to forget. Meg and Esther find themselves at bitter odds. As they navigate the tensions of their brutal relationship, they draw unsettling lines between Claire's death, their own haunted memories, and a long ago loss no one in their family has ever been able to face. With the house once again pulling them ever closer, Meg and Esther must find the connection between their sister's death and the shadow that has chased them across the years before the darkness claimed them too. That actually sounds very haunting, very atmospheric. So you definitely have the horror aspect of it, but it also sounds like you're going to have complicated sister dynamics in that as well, which y'all know I love. So this is another one that I would love your feedback on. I typically don't gravitate towards horror just because horror typically tends to be all vibes with very little character growth and development, but this sounds like there could be more of that in here. So I'm very intrigued by this one as well, and I thought you might be too. Also on the 13th, we have a new release from Jen DeLuca. Now Jen DeLuca wrote that contemporary romance series that was kind of based around Renaissance fairs. This one actually sounds like it's going to be a contemporary slash paranormal romance, and I am intrigued. It says small Florida coastal towns often find themselves scrambling for the tourism dollars that the Orlando theme parks leave behind. And within the town limits of Boneyard Key, the residents decided long ago to lean into its ghostiness. Nick Royer, owner of the Hallowed Grounds Coffee Shop, oh my gosh, I love that name, embraces the ghost tourism that keeps the local economy afloat, as well as his spectral roommate. At least he doesn't have to run the air conditioning. Cassie Rutherford possibly overreacted to all her friends getting married and having kids by leaving Orlando and buying a flipped historic cottage in Boneyard Key. Though there's something unusual with her new home. Her laptop won't charge in any outlet, and the poetry magnets on her fridge definitely didn't read wrong and my house when she put them up. She's charmed by the colorful history surrounding her, and she's catching a certain vibe from the grumpy coffee shop owner whenever he slips her a free slice of banana bread along with her coffee order. As Nick takes her on a ghost tour, sharing town gossip that tourists don't get to hear, and they spend nights side by side looking into the former owners of her haunted cottage, their connection solidifies into something very real and enticing. But Cassie's worried she's in too deep with this whole haunted home ownership thing, and Nick's afraid to get too close in case Cassie gets scared away for good. So that definitely seems like it's going to be a rom-com light-hearted paranormal romance, not necessarily on the darker side. And it sounds like it's going to be a really good time. Like I said, I love the coffee shop name, Hallowed Grounds. I just love that. It's so creative. So I definitely wanted to go ahead and mention this here because I know her other romance series was very popular. It was getting a lot of hype, a lot of buzz. And I think this one deserved a little bit of attention as well. Also on the 13th, we have the newest release from TJ Newman called Worst Case Scenario. I have read Falling by TJ Newman. I read it for the Amazing Readathon and I really enjoy it. TJ Newman, from my understanding, is a former flight attendant and now she kind of writes thrillers based on like airline accidents. Falling was absolutely a fast page turning time and I'm definitely interested in reading more from her. This says, when a pilot suffers a heart attack at 35,000 feet, a commercial airliner filled with passengers crashes into a nuclear power plant in the small town of Wakita, Minnesota, which becomes ground zero for a catastrophic national crisis with global implications. The International Nuclear Event Scale tracks nuclear disasters. It has seven levels. Level seven is a major accident with only two on record, Fukushima and Chernobyl. There has never been a level eight until now. In this heart-stopping thriller, ordinary people, power plant employees, firefighters, teachers, families, neighbors, and friends are thrust into an extraordinary situation as they face the ultimate test of their lives. It will take the combined courage, ingenuity, and determination of a brave few to save not only their community and loved ones, but the fate of humanity at large. I am absolutely here for it. Super fast-paced thrillers don't always work for me just because they are so fast-paced, but I definitely had a really good time with Falling, and I would love to read more from her in the future. Another increasingly popular author that has a new release coming out is Ava Reed. She has a new release coming out called Lady Macbeth. And this blurb just says, a reimagining of Lady Macbeth, Shakespeare's most famous villainess, giving her a voice, a past, and a power that transforms the story men have written for her. This sounds like it's going to be kind of like a feminist take on Lady Macbeth. And I know that a lot of people are really highly anticipating this. I have never read anything from Ava Reed. I've heard very mixed things about A Study in Drowning, but I know a lot of people very, very much love it and are really interested in this one. And it is definitely one to keep your eye out for. We also have the new contemporary romance coming out from Emma Lord called The Breakup Pact. This just says two best friends who haven't spoken in 10 years pretend to date after breakups with their respective exes go viral in this delightfully fun and deeply emotional novel. So this sounds like it's going to have a lot of tropes going on. You're going to have a fake dating situation, but you're also going to have a best friends to lover situation in here as well. And it also sounds like they haven't really spoken in a while. So there's going to be that reconciliation. So it sounds like this could get a little bit messy. I'm not entirely sure. I have read one other Emma Lord. It was fine. It was nothing spectacular to me, but I know that there are plenty of people who are fans of her contemporary romances. So I definitely wanted to make sure that you were aware that this new release was coming out. And then the final book that I wanted to mention for the 13th is the newest release from Jessa Maxwell, who was the author of The Golden Spoon, which I believe was like kind of a cozy mystery that very much was reminiscent of those like British baking shows that you see. This newest release is called I Need You to Read This. It says Alex Marx's move to New York City is supposed to be a fresh start. She plans to lay low with her mundane copywriting job, but the news of the murder of her childhood hero, Francis Keene, throws her for a loop.
Clue, beloved staff writer and the woman behind the famous advice column, Dear Constance, Keen's death is a shock to her countless fans and readers. When Alex sees an advertisement searching for her replacement, she impulsively applies, never expecting to actually get the job. But almost immediately, she begins to receive strange letters at the office, and soon Alex wonders why the murderer has never been found. Worse, she can't help but question if her new boss and editor-in-chief, Howard Dimitri, was involved with Keen's death. As she starts her own investigation, the dark secrets of her own past rise to the surface, and soon Alex finds herself trapped in a dangerous and potentially deadly mystery. Will she solve the murder and save her own skin, or will Alex face a similar fate? You have kind of like an advice columnist who is murdered, and somebody who is interested in solving that murder takes her place. So that could really be interesting, especially if the murderer is actually writing in to the new advice columnist. I would be interested to see the take on that. The Golden Spoon, from my understanding, was kind of like a mid-level for a lot of people. It was basically a three stars. It was fine, but nothing spectacular. This one sounds like it could be a little bit on the darker side. I'm not sure you'll have to tell me, but I did want to make sure that you all knew that this one was coming out soon. Moving on into the 20th, we have the newest rom-com from Sarah Desai called Till Heist Do Us Part. She is the one that wrote the dating plan that I do believe was featured on Book of the Month. And this doesn't explicitly say that it's part of a series, but it does seem to be the follow-up to her book To Have and To Heist. So I'm not going to say anything about Till Heist Do Us Part, but just to read the blurb from To Have and To Heist, it says, to exonerate her best friend, one woman must mastermind a jewelry heist during the wedding of the season in this hilarious romantic comedy caper from the author of The Dating Plan. And then this one just says diamond necklaces, billionaires, mafia bosses, and student loans. It's all in a day's work for Simi Chopra and her ragtag heist crew in the next romantic comedy caper from Sarah Desai. So I really don't think that you need to read one before the other, but I just wanted you to be aware that the same main character in this one was featured in To Have and To Heist. So if you enjoyed that one, you might want to go ahead and pick up this follow-up, which again is coming out on August 20th. We also have a new release from Jodi Picot finally coming out on August 20th, and it's called By Any Other Name. I'm going to read the synopsis of this one just because I kind of want to gauge whether I personally am interested in it. It says, in 1581, Amelia Bassano, like most young women of her day, is allowed no voice of her own. But as the Lord Chamberlain's mistress, she has access to all theater in England and finds a way to bring her work to the stage secretly. And yet, creating some of the world's greatest dramatic masterpieces comes at a great cost. By paying a man for the use of his name, she will write her own out of history. In the present, playwright Melina Green has just written a new work inspired by the life of her Elizabethan ancestor, Amelia Bassano. Although the challenges are different 400 years later, the playing field is still not level for women in theater. Would Melina, like Amelia, be willing to forfeit her credit as author just for a chance to see her work perform? Told in intertwining narratives, the sweeping tale of ambition, courage, and desire asks what price each woman is willing to pay to see their work live on, even if it means they will be forgotten. Okay, so I think I'm going to go ahead and add this one to my TBR. I have mixed feelings about Jodi Bacot because I think that she is a tremendously talented author. There is no doubt about it. Her books are always extremely compelling and very, very well researched. And sometimes she definitely does venture more into historical, like this one. This has a very much historical perspective and a present day perspective that was also the same in The Storyteller, which was a World War II historical fiction and was one of my favorite World War II historical fictions of all time. The concern that I have with Jodi Picot and one of the reasons why I don't actively seek her out all of the time is because she definitely likes to talk about very controversial social issues within her stories. And even though I feel like she provides a very well-rounded perspective a lot of the time and she's able to present both sides of the argument very, very clearly, there's obviously very heavy handed social commentary. So I'm a little bit skittish when I go into some of her books these days, but I just cannot help but love her writing and the way that she tells a story. I have really enjoyed almost every single book that I have read by Jodi Picot, and I think that this one could also be really great. This obviously has very feminist undertones about a woman who's trying to make it in theater, but she thinks that she might have to use the name of a man in order to get that done, which is really sad, and I'm really interested to see how Jodi Picot kind of tackles this. So I think that this is certainly one that's going to be on my radar for sure. Really quickly, I did also want to touch upon the fact that Karen Slaughter has the next book in the Will Trent series coming out called This Is Why We Lie. I'm not going to say absolutely anything about this just because it is book number 12 in the Will Trent series and I've only read books one and two so I'm very very far behind in the series. Karen Slaughter is one of my favorite thriller authors, one of my favorite authors of all time actually and I've really enjoyed the first two books in the Will Trent series and I'm looking forward to getting further along into it but for those who are caught up and who will be reading this one, this one comes out on August 20th. Another notable author who has a new release on August 20th is Jessie Q. Sutanto. Now she wrote the Dial A for Aunties, kind of like cozy mystery series. But from my understanding, this one is going to be more of a traditional thriller, more on the darker side. And it's called You Will Never Be Me. It says, influencer Meredith Lee didn't teach Aspen Palmer how to blossom on social media just to be ditched as soon as Aspen became big. So can anyone really blame Mare for doing a little stalking? Nothing serious, more like stalking life. Then Mare gets lucky. She finds one of Aspen's kids' iPads and spipes it. Now she has access to the family calendar and Aspen's social media account. Would anyone else be able to resist tweaking things a little here and there, showing up in Aspen's place for meetings with potential sponsors? Mare's only 
taking back what she deserves, what should have been hers. Meanwhile, Aspen doesn't understand why her perfectly filtered life is falling apart. Sponsors are dropping her, fellow influencers are ghosting her, and even her own husband seems to find her repulsive. If she doesn't find out who's behind everything, she might just lose it all. But what everyone seems to forget is that Aspen didn't become one of TikTok's biggest momfluencers by being naive. When Meredith suddenly goes missing, Aspen's world is upended and mysterious threats begin to arrive, but she won't let anything get in the way of her perfect life again. Okay, so here we have a story of influencers or momfluencers, if you will, and one being very jealous of the other and trying to mess up her life and trying to steal it. I don't love that. I don't love toxic female relationships. I don't love one woman trying to steal the life of another. I have never read anything by Jessie Q. Sutanto, but if you were a fan of her cozy mystery series and you want to kind of dive in and see what she can do in a more darker realm, this is one that you would want to pick up on August 20th. And the last book that I want to mention for August 20th is the newest release from Rachel Kohler Croft called We Love the Nightlife, which is actually a vampire story. It says, locked in a toxic female friendship, two vampires careen toward catastrophe in this dark and dazzling page turner set amidst London's glittering disco scene. And so it's set in London, 1979, and it's going to follow their toxic female friendship and vampirism is involved in this somehow. So that seems really interesting. So it definitely sounds like it's going to be historical in nature, but also you have the paranormal fantasy aspect that are vampires. If you enjoy Stone Cold Fox by Rachel Kohlercroft, this might be one to keep on your radar. All right, and then we are moving on into August 27th, and I actually only have two to talk with you about for this date. The first is the next book in the Maple Hill series by Hannah Grace. Y'all are probably familiar with Icebreaker, which is a hockey romance that kind of blew up. So this is definitely another hockey romance. It sounds like it's going to be a Nathan and Haley situation because you're going to have this hockey star that is struggling in a class and a very academic, studious nerd who offers to help him. And I'm kind of digging the vibes of that. I definitely loved One Tree Hill. I loved Nathan and Haley's relationship during One Tree Hill. I really don't know if I actually want to pick up the series because I prefer like harder hitting emotional romances and I don't know if these ones kind of fit that bill but you'll have to let me know. All I know is that if you are a big fan of this series this is one that you will definitely want to pick up when it comes out. And then the final one that I want to mention is a book called Red River Road. It is a new thriller by Anna Downs. It says Katie Sweeney is looking for her sister. A year earlier just three weeks into a solo van life trip her free-spirited younger sister Phoebe vanished without a trace on the remote achingly beautiful coastal highway in Western Australia. With no witnesses, no leads, and no DNA evidence, the case has gone cold. Katie refuses to give up on her. Using Phoebe's social media account as a map, Katie retraces her sister's steps, searching for any clues the police may have missed. And then Katie's path collides with that of Beth, who is on the run from her own dark past. Katie realizes that Beth might be her best and only chance of finding the truth, and the two women form an uneasy alliance to find out what really happened to Phoebe in this beautiful, wild, and perilous place. All right, I am actually very intrigued by this one. It sounds like it's going to be a very atmospheric type of novel. This is definitely one that I have on my radar so I wanted to bring it to your attention as well. All right everybody we are finally done. Those are just some of the additional new releases that I wanted to highlight for August. As per usual this list is not meant to be comprehensive so if I miss anything in this video or even that book of the month prediction video please feel free to leave that additional information down below for others who might be interested in knowing some more new releases that are coming out for sure. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty go ahead and leave me a vampire emoji and once again I want to give a huge thank you to Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. Please do not forget to use my link down in the description box below to check them out. I truly believe that Ana Luisa is a wonderful place for your next jewelry purchase for yourself or the ones you love and I believe they are having a pretty good sale on right now as well. So that will be linked in the description box below. And as always if you like this video or if you just like me please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I typically post two videos a week one on Wednesdays one on Sundays and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms which you will always find linked down below along with any books featured in the video. Until next time y'all.